What's the right answer? Well, what's the correct answer? <laughs> I will get to it. <laughs> I know, I will, though. We have a whole year. Right? It's 7 o'clock, but we're expecting two of the members to be here, so let's give it a minute since we're going to be covering some procedural items. I'll tell you what, I'll do it before I go on vacation. I don't, you know, what? it is what it is. You, you do what you do. Right. Yeah, I'm rolling down then. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> I told him it was one. <laughs> <laughs> Careful what we say. Rosie, Rosie, Rosie. We have hot mics here. They're all hot mics. <laughs> Seven tonight. I might be playing with people. Yes. I thought when I sent that thing, I say here at Kelly. Did I remind you did. Everybody, yeah. you did. I remember you did. saying that. Because well, I, I had checked the website last night. I don't remember, and I sent you the thing that wasn't <coughs> right. Say, have they started with anything? They, so most of the demo's done, um, but they've got a couple outstanding issues. So they're trying to figure those out. Hmm. Just to tell you, probably will be yeah. Christmas-ish. Really? Oh, really? Yeah. We'll have that Christmas party at the new town. That's so crazy. It's going to be at least four months, solid months, once they start reconstruction. <laughs> Another minute. You had that off file. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I guess it's, I thought you were going to do some proof. Yeah. I'm going to prove that. <laughs> I'm going to prove that color over here. Well, why don't we start? Uh, I want to thank everybody uh, for starting a little bit earlier today, 7 o'clock. I want to welcome our new members. Uh, this is a major change for the board. Typically, it's only two, it's mm. four. And it's exciting to have, I'm not saying anything about age, but some very experienced people uh, in both the community and in town government uh, uh, to be joining us. And I appreciate you uh, selecting me as chair. Uh, one of the things that I want to do this year is make sure everyone knows that this is a board and everything has to be presented to the full board and everything, it's convincing the full board and getting a majority of the entire board. Um, I also want to thank Fran for stepping up as vice chair and helping out uh, last week, uh, the last meeting when I was in Las Vegas and the disjointed voice from the skies. <laughs> um, I expect that over the next year I will make a fool of myself at least once. And I put bets on more than that. So, 
everybody should chime in because I don't want to be alone. Um, and I want to thank Ken for his leadership over the last uh, six years. In a way, he protected all of us from having to step up. And I'm not going to give the rest of the board any excuse because hopefully by the end of the year, any, any one of the board should be able to move up uh, and act as chair. Um, <coughs> looking at the coming year, I want to continue the good work that our predecessors did, uh, provide more uniformity and transparency to the process, and educate all of the board, um, including myself, uh, so we get stepped up in our experience. And Jennifer, you want to touch on? <clears throat> yeah, so um, just to touch on that a little bit. So there's a group called the Citizen Planner Training Collaborative that is um, part of UMass, and they do a lot of planning workshops for cities and towns, and they do a spring conference and a fall conference every year. Um, and they, have, they also do some um, on-site, I should say, here would come here so I've already reached out to them because I feel like not only with the four new people that were just recently elected but last year we had you know two remaining new people but three new people so we have relatively new board all around and I feel like it would be beneficial for the board as a whole even to to learn some stuff and so they have a couple of sessions um, it's a two-part, uh, it's roles and responsibilities of planning board members, so I felt like that would probably be a good place to start. So I reached out to them to see if they would be able to get a trainer to come in to Hockington to work with us on that, and we do have some funding for it, so it should be um, hopefully beneficial to all of you, so I'll keep you posted on that. Um, and I think we talked a little bit last time about, you know, when there's other conferences and things like that, and I get notified, I will definitely send that stuff out to you guys for for whatever in your interests lie, you know, we can definitely do that. So so that's, I think, where we're at as far as educating the board. If it turns out that we have some shorter board meetings and anybody has any ideas for topics, et cetera, I could ask Jennifer to cover a 10, 15 minute period sure. on educating us on certain aspects of it. So we bring it into the, the board meetings itself. Um, just generally people forget that we have limited authority and at times we need to depend on common sense good ideas and our personal charm to get things done uh, we're limited by the town <laughs> we're all in trouble the town we're limited by town bylaws and state law and regulation what we can do and at times we approve things that we don't personally uh, necessarily want to approve but based on the authority we have, and they've met all the qualifications, we have to uh, approve it. Uh, for those who want to get involved, this is what government is. It's a volunteer government. Uh, good opportunity is we're going to look for members of Zach later in the summer, and that's a way to get involved in the, uh, the process. So looking at some of the changes, the first change I would like to offer for discussion uh, is that for each of the public hearing projects, we have a designated project liaison. Uh, it doesn't relieve any of us of obligation of studying and understanding a project, but that person would learn more in depth on uh, what the planned action is. A uh, person would work with the principal planner, the chair, and the vice chair on the application, um, participate in meetings, if any, with the proponents, um, participate with the <coughs> chair and vice chair on handling certain parts of the project outline. Uh, so I'd like to open up, up for discussion, and one of the questions is, how do we want to allocate the projects? Do people just want to volunteer, want to go alphabetical order? Or uh, any ideas, draw, suggestions? Draw, draw numbers out of the hat. Draw numbers out of no. the hat. <laughs> um, I, uh, so it makes sense to me. I like that idea a lot, actually. It makes sense to me a little bit to uh, volunteer just because people's um, respond, you know, personal lives kind of come and go. Yeah, plus right. their interests, right? Their interests that, right exactly. Their mm -hmm. lives, exactly. So I'm cool with that. And if nobody volunteers, then plan B is you pick. Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you better August start following here. Let's not think over $50. Uh, Mr. Chairman, one question, if, if I may. Part of maybe the responsibilities will be kind of further elaborated upon. But is this individual who's kind of the point liaison also interacting with the proponent at all, or is that interaction going to be primarily with board members? We are a combination of both, but we're going to cover interaction with the applicant <coughs> a little bit later on, because that's also something that I want to formalize and make sure it's part of the group. Uh, we're also going to adhere more towards the uh, submission deadlines. So <clears throat> for those of you who don't know, um, our deadline for submittal of um, uh, information for the meeting coming up is Tuesday at 5 p.m. Um, <clears throat> so we've been some, somewhat flexible. We're going to stop being somewhat flexible <laughs> and be more strict about that. Um, it, it puts a little bit of a burden on staff when you know things are <coughs> flying in on Wednesday and Thursday and we're trying to get packages in and out. So um, that is not for to clarify, that is not for new submissions. So when someone submits a new project for a public hearing for a site plan or a special permit, that gets submitted at whatever time. And then we internally and staff, we review it to make sure of its completeness and make sure there's other things happening. And then we would schedule a hearing at a certain time. The 5 p.m. Tuesday deadline is for projects already in the pipeline, if there's new plans or uh, report letters, or if there's an A&R plan that needs to be filed, or things that come in sort of more frequently, not like bigger submissions. Those get submitted and then we schedule a hearing and then we go from there. So we're gonna start being pretty strict on the. One of the reason is I, for those who haven't been on the board before, is you show up at the meeting and all of a sudden there'd be a plan sitting there that uh, you hadn't seen before and trying to respond to it you know during the the meeting itself makes it difficult so this make sure we have time to actually go through it i just want to make a comment i think that it i really appreciate that and i think it's best practice for the professional staff but it's also in fairness to the public yeah. it's better uh, you know it's, it's better for them as well and increases the transparency yeah. yeah what about members of the public that want to email or comment in advance too that they I guess they couldn't make a comment till they see the packet probably right yeah so I think um, I think a little uh, we, we talked a little bit about you know if there's tr letters that trail review of plans or review of a engineering comment letter or things like that um, we could take something like that up until the package is finalized um, and typically for things like public input I will take that up until the day of the meeting and email them to you yeah. I'm not gonna tell the public they can right. <laughs> comment yeah, right. on yeah. something but um, you know I always tell people though your best opportunity to get something included in a package is Tuesday at 5 p.m. because I have a lot of things on my desk and mm -hmm. I have you know piles mm -hmm. and like the, the planning board package goes in this pile Tuesday before 5 p.m. after 5 p.m. all bets are off so <laughs> I do my best, but you know, some things slip through the cracks, so. And then tied in with that, we're talking about meeting with applicants, is any of us, including myself, and uh, all meetings with applicants should be scheduled for the staff. Uh, there shouldn't be one-off discussion. If we know somebody's <coughs> about to file or has a filing, shouldn't be side conversations mm -hmm. with individual members uh, of the board. Just to tack on to that just quickly. If, also, if somebody has already filed before this board, technically um, offline conversations with that person is a violation of the open meeting law. So you want to just be careful that you're not doing that as well. So I'm glad you, go ahead. Uh, glad you brought that up. Because with um, regard to the liaison, uh, mm -hmm. that's something that I was you know, kind of thought of as a, sort of an ex parte communication. <laughs> Um, without the rest of the board here, is that? No, that's going to be, we'll go through. It, okay. it, in other words, it's the same. It just brings another person in addition to the chair and a, the vice chair mm -hmm. to be involved. But doesn't mean that there's sort of extracurricular communication. So I, I think in so that more, case, it's more of like that person is getting information alongside myself and maybe mm -hmm. John 
and then bringing information to back to the board that okay. is okay it's when you see the person at Starbucks and you want to have a conversation with them and then mm -hmm. you keep that information to yourself that's mm -hmm. sort of what would be the violation of the open meeting law okay so, so Oh, can I ask? So, what about um, not the applicant, but members of the public who have heard about things and have questions? Like, so and you run into them at Starbucks, right? <laughs> so, ultimately, the, the the sort of test is, in order for the board to fairly vote on a project, everybody has have to has have to have had the same information and been privy to the same information. So, if you're getting information offline after a project has been filed, whether it's from the public or whether it's from an applicant, a developer, whoever, you know you're really kind of obligated to bring that information back to the board. In order to cover yourself, your probably best best is to say, look, there's a project before the board right now. Like, if you have comments, put them in writing, come to the meeting, we need to address that before the board. I know like your instinct is to want to help the person mm -hmm. and listen to them, and I, I get that. And it's fine if you want to listen, but then I would sort of redirect them to put all of that back into a letter to the entire board. Okay, so if we get comment, Usually people are asking questions and I can just send them the link to the packet say the thing is in there. You yeah, know, that's fine. Yeah. Like that kind of stuff is fine. But it's like when you get into like the discussion and then they pull out the plan and they say, This is what I don't like. Yeah. And what are you gonna do about this? And you know, that's the kind of back and forth that really okay. should be happening. And so if that were to happen when we were to get new information from a member of the public, we should write it down and send it to the chair or send it to you, I guess. Yeah, either way okay. it's probably fine. So we can redistribute it to the entire yeah. board. And I think the best bet is send it to Jennifer, <coughs> and I'm using her as the distribution mm -hmm. for all okay. of us. So no side discussions. The principal planner can meet with the applicant on own for procedural issues, questions, make sure packages are complete, et cetera. Uh, I will meet with Jennifer on Tuesdays after the 5 p.m. deadline um, to review the next meeting. Uh, the vice chair is welcome to come to any of those meetings and then if the meetings are uh, with app if there's any meetings with applicants or potential applicants who want to meet with the chair it'll be scheduled through the principal planner um, and if a project the principal planner will invite the vice chair and if there is something that we know about <coughs> and uh, Mr. We were talking about the liaison role. Yes. Is the liaison would be invited to come to the meeting too at, at six o'clock, mm -hmm. and we figured we can schedule it differently. But for many of us who are working, six o'clock might be a better time, mm -hmm. and that's the night that the town hall staff is is mm -hmm. available in the evening. So so, so six o'clock on the same evening of the meeting. Is it no, the Tuesday before. Tuesday the meeting. before. Okay. So five o'clock is the submission deadline. And then I'll meet with Jennifer at five. And then if there's any follow-up meeting discussion, if a developer wants to come in, that's at six o'clock. But they would all be scheduled in advance, so you would right. know. Okay. It's not a drop-in session. It's, yeah, <laughs> and we need to ensure we have no quorum issues that we don't have right. too many people show up. Uh, the goal is complete transparency. Uh, no side discussions, no ahead of time, thumbs up. Not that it's been done, but just make sure everybody's on the same page. Uh, tweaking of the project outline and taking some of the comments that were at the last meeting. Um, so I think, you know, John and I talked about maintaining the outline as it exists, uh, maybe tweaking some of um, the pieces so that it's not so cumbersome and we're not you know identifying every single piece of discussion on the outline and more general items um, it doesn't mean we don't discuss it right it's just on the outline not every little point right so. the outline is meant to be a guide not a like script so um, and then um, we did talk about um, John had asked that I um, add an item um, for myself to inform the board for each project like what would be allowed by right without any approvals from the planning board so that the board can put into context what it's reviewing. Um, he thought that would be helpful, especially for some of the newer members. Um, but I, th I think also for the public as a whole, Don doesn't necessarily realize that uh, many of the plans that are coming to us for uh, approval on something, but something can be done without our approval. Or something can be done with just concom approval or whatever. Right. So being able to outline that ahead of time sort of gives everybody on the same page 
knowing where we're starting from. I was wondering too if um, <clears throat> just at the top for at whatever project that we're talking about, you can just say, you know, specifically what is in front of the board at this stage and what at the next stage is, you know, in the, the 30 second elevator speech. So everybody just knows the public and we know exactly what we're talking about at this in this phase and um, what might be coming. So you think you want that on the outline piece? Just at the top, okay. really, really simply. It I don't usually goes in my memo, but I can. Yeah. Yes, I know it okay. does. I, I just. Um, you know what, we can tie okay. it in because one of the things is then after the, the proponent has their discussion, then Jennifer will mention what is actually in front of us at that time. And maybe it's that section sure. is on top of the outline. Sure, okay. So that, and then the other thing based on, um, I think it was Irfan's comments about um, environmental issues um, wanting to be added. Um, I just had some concerns about that, not wanting to step on the toes of like the CONCOM or other boards that may have some review regulatory authority. So we decided to put it as um, an item that said um, need for other committee involvement or other committee review where we would list, um, you know, CONCOM issues, design review board, board of health, whatever it may be, so that that would be a time to focus on those issues. I don't know if that addresses your concerns, but mm -hmm. okay. I just didn't want somebody to look at that and say, oh, well, why are they reviewing environmental issues? They're not the environmental regulatory authority. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> uh, also look at the project liaison to get more involved with the outline and may if there was an interest, take over part of the outline for the public hearing and, and run that section of it, run the whole section of it or whatever. So more involved, part of it, what I try and do is get everybody ready and trained to step up in the next couple of years and <laughs> take over. Hint, hint. Hint, hint. Uh, one of the discussions is, and I called it office hours, um, and some time for basic questions or educational session. It's not time for discussion on specific projects brought by applicants, but general items. And maybe we do once a month at scattered times and kind of rotate the principal planner who volunteered and, and members of the board and set up. So, you know, for July we'll do it such and such. And just a time for people they come in, have general questions. Um, nobody may show up, but the opportunity is there mm -hmm. in kind of a more relaxed setting. It also puts, you know, face time for you guys with the, the residents so that they're not always coming here angry. <laughs> That's what the sponsors do, as well, yeah. right, in their meeting. <clears throat> yeah. Email. Emails. So uh, we had a brief discussion last time about emails for the board. And in my memo, I don't know if you've all read it, but I did talk to the IT department. So they're um, not doing emails for all board members anymore for a couple of reasons cost and just cumbersomeness of <laughs> if everybody who was a appointed and elected official got an email, it would just be too much for them to maintain. So um, what they do now is one for the chair. Um, John has asked that that be forwarded to my emails, so um, that's already been done through the IT department, so it's on the website, it's, it comes to me. Um, uh, my contact information should also be on the website so people have that information um, as well. There's also um, an issue with, if you start doing a lot of discussion amongst emails, it's also a violation of the open meeting law, so we just wanna stay away from that as well. So thought it would be best if there was one central location. So the problem that I think that we run into is sometimes residents email us individually because they find our email elsewhere mm -hmm. than not on the town website. And so what would the procedure be for that? I mean, at that point, I would just say thank you for your email. I'll forward this to okay. Jennifer or the board or however you sure. want to phrase it. Yeah. I mean, obviously, you don't say, I can't look at that. You know what I mean? <laughs> but I mean, I just think, you know, just say thank you. And, and I mean, if somebody's sending it to you, that's... <clears throat> I mean, it, you can't help that. Right. One of the things I always did, um, and will do, is if I respond to somebody, I always put uh, Jennifer on as a copy, and then and you essentially have that message, but then you have the whole correspondence link. 
because we do we are responsible for maintain you know helping her maintain the town maintain that right I know yeah. when I went to the workshop <coughs> that Connor did in January they were suggesting that we create if we didn't have a town email that we create our own special email that it was for our board work like you know Amy Redworth planning board or something so that um, it could be separated out easily in case there were public records requests uh, so I don't know I don't people that. who just like create like a separate folder and just be and diligent just about putting them in there into that folder. I mean, I don't know that you need a whole separate email. Okay. But and so I was looking at the town website, the planning board section, and I don't see any like an email anywhere. Okay. Think. I had already asked IT to do it, so I will double check with them. Let me just see. maybe if I click on John's name, it'll pop up. But I think it's when people can't find the right email, they're more likely yep. to try to email us individually. Right. <laughs> yeah, I will make a note to try to add it to tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. And before throwing it out for other suggestions, probably the most important <laughs> item, and Jennifer's laughing, is it has become when we have these two and a half hour meetings. Uh, who can control their personal biology the best by sitting in the chair, being awake, <coughs> and not having to get water, and not having to hit the restroom. So I have requested that if we know it is a full session, that somewhere in the middle we take a five-minute break to get up, stretch our legs, <laughs> you know, bio break, bio break or whatever, <laughs> uh, halftime. Maybe we can get a show going on. Yeah, right? I, I, I thought maybe, uh, you know, sing... Uh, so you're going to carry off the machine? Yeah, like do a little song, <laughs> Sweet Caroline or something. Um, any other suggestions? I, I have a question. Is 7.30 the preferred time or is earlier possible to start? I stay here usually, so I am become at 4.30. Okay, 4.30 is too early. <laughs> yeah, I think 7.30 was based on... You know, I'm open for discussion, but I think 7.30 was based on people coming from wherever they're coming. Yeah. So what we can do is maybe when we have a full board is bring it up for I don't really discussion. care, but I would just as soon start just a tiny bit earlier and get done a tiny bit yeah. earlier, but I can be cooperative too. Yeah. You also have to consider the components. Right. That's a nice theory, but usually when you start early, you don't add to your All right, all right, all right, all right. I think we need to point that out, but yes. But if, we, if we're going to make a commitment to that, yeah. I'm fine with that, but. Fair enough. Um, I had a question about possibly, um, like, work sessions or, or some time, and, like, I know that we only have one meeting in July and one meeting in August at this point. No, we have two in August. Guys. Oh, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, just to talk about things like um, like tracking the master plan, for example, things that aren't necessarily proponent driven, and I don't know how much that is, but I didn't know if there was um, any appetite for something like that. Well, I think typically we've we've put it on the uh, on the agenda for the meeting at the bottom and yeah. cover it uh, as at the meetings as we do it. If it looks like that, we don't have we're not getting to it, then maybe we look at, uh, okay. why don't you submit to Jennifer any of the suggestions? We try to plan it into the meetings. If it looks not, you can always call a special meeting. Okay, perfect. <coughs> any other suggestions? <coughs> Jennifer? I'm good. And it's almost 7.30. Can we start a little bit earlier? Sure. <laughs> no, it's an inf informal discussion. Let me come to the, uh, to the table. You want to do a little intro, Jennifer, even though it's an informal discussion? Sure, I don't have a ton of intro other than um, I met with um, Mon Nation um, a while back now, I think, um, and they had some interest in developing land off of Whisper Way and they wanted to get some feedback so I suggested I think that they come before you for a formal discussion before they submitted any plans um, based on some of what's happened recently so yep. um, this is what's before you tonight um, I just know and I think I wrote in my memo that the previous subdivision approval did limit um, the number of lots and um, road construction 
um, if they were to ever to expand that, they would have to file a new filing. So it can't be an amendment to the existing, there has to be a whole new filing. Okay. I was never able to get the decision from the town clerk at this point. It's still in the vault of town hall somewhere. So okay. um, there may be more that I'm not aware of at the moment. Thank you. Good evening, Ron Nation. Uh, Holmes, Peter Lloyd, with uh, Gary and Helmond. Uh, two sons back there, uh, Chris and Craig Nation. Um, Peter's going to walk you through this. Okay. 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 Um, so the existing parcel, well, it's made of more, it's made of three parcels. Um, is The outline is in yellow. It comes up like this and down. So we have 495 South in this location here. Wood Street runs along the bottom. <coughs> and then this cul-de-sac, this 800 foot cul-de-sac is uh, Whisper Way. So it's currently constructed. It's not paved, it's just like a gravel, gravel road. Um, so like I said, the total area is uh, roughly, um, put the three parcels together, is 45 acres in size. So we do have a wetland running along Wood Street here. It also has a vernal pool within it, so we have to be 125 feet away from, from that. We have a large wetland in the back here that goes towards um, 495 and under it. And then we have a small isolated wetland in this location here. Um, we did do soil testing throughout the parcel. Um, a lot of ledge, um, and there was some additional soil testing that was done previous uh, in this area here, and they came up with a, a very good uh, perforate and depth to, to groundwater. So this is my yield plan. Um, we have an existing house on Wood Street right here. We have two existing houses right here on Whisper Way, and then there's a, a third house that comes off the cul-de-sac that's located right here. So those are three existing houses and the rest of the lot is vacant. So what we want to do is we want to um, extend the road like this around. So this road A from the end of the cul-de-sac around back on itself is roughly 2,900 uh, feet long. And then we, we're going to come out of the middle of Whisper Way from here to here, which is roughly 666 um, lingual feet. So basically, from here to here is 350, from here to the end is 800. But basically, we have two access points to this, this existing cul-de-sac. The reason why we didn't come this way is because of the vernal pool and the wetland. We are filling wetlands in this location here, um, but it's roughly only 1,400 square feet. Um, and with the configuration, we come up with 19 lots, meaning all this, all the zoning, area, frontage. Uh, so this is my yield plan. So back here, to minimize the disturbance um, with the wetlands, we're going to do a common drive for these two lots, and this one will have its own driveway. So that'll that'll um, reduce the filling of the wetlands. Rough. This is roughly another thousand square feet of wetlands. <coughs> and we do know we would have to file with conservation. Okay. So this gives us our yield plan and our number of lots, which is 19 that we can work with. Before you move, on, what is the distance from the center road, for lack of a better term, where it, and to the farthest point on the circle? Um, Roughly. So, yep. Roughly um, 600 feet. Okay. You know how many wetland crossings are all that plan? Um, there's going to be one for the road and two for the driveways. Okay. And this will have a community um, septic area. Okay. So all these lots would gravity to a pump station and then be pumped up to a community leach field. Okay. Before you remove it, any questions from the board? Yes, I do have one. <coughs> Mr. Chair. So that's a house in, with a road going completely around it? Correct. I don't think I've ever seen that in town, have we? Okay. Is there any reason why you did uh, that? Just <coughs> because of the shape of the lot, yeah, this is a very narrow area, but it goes, the area is kind of like a big, big rectangle up here. So we're trying to get frontage to cut the lots out to, to maximize the number of lots. So 
and we didn't want to do a cul-de-sac, so this is basically a loop back onto itself, and then coming out. That's why we did that. So, Mr. Chair. Yes, I think you have a comment yeah, about it. Yeah, just one comment. The, the, well, what he is referring to it as a yield plan. It's, this is the this is also a buy right plan, right. if you will. You know, the conventional zoning. Right. Right. Okay. Except, I believe, because of the number of acres, you have to do an open space plan first. Right. How many acres? It's more than ten acres, right? Right. Yeah. So you have right. to do an open space plan. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, just interested in terms of the topography. Is a slope all the way? Is it pretty flat? What's the um, this, if you, it is. is uh, <laughs> it is pretty steep. Um, you're looking at probably um, so 490 is right here, and it slopes down to 495. And then if you look down here, it's at 350. So you're looking at like 140 feet. It is. If you go out there, it's it. it it's a pretty good it's a pretty good slope and then it drops because you can see the contours it drops pretty steep right in the middle and then it kind of flattens out but then it drops again and where you see all the, these contours like that that's kind of like a ledge yeah I was trying to put that was anything else for okay. um, is there frontage on Wood Street it looked to me like or is it um, for the, the yeah biggest we do have frontage all along here on Wood Street correct. But is, there's not a way to get the road, or to have, instead of having two entrances on Whisper Way, have one on Right, the reason street. why, this is a vernal pool, so you have okay. to be, you're supposed to stay out of yeah, sure. yeah. disturbance. We would have to do another filling if we came through here. Okay. Which, which way is the north? Sorry. <coughs> Sorry. I have a hard time. Oh, well, I would say north is down, down the page. Okay. Because okay. this is 495 south going right. Okay. So I see a separation in the, the wetland area that you say has the vernal pool, mm -hmm. and it looks like there's another wetland. Okay. Uh, no, down Over right here? there. Yeah. Yeah, there's an existing crossing right there. Okay. So there's, a, there's like a little like a little cut path or that crosses there. And is that owned? Is that part of the lot? Or is that, that is part of the that lot. Could be yes. There is also, um, let's see, this driveway. There's a driveway that comes out right about here. And I think Fafford has a development right across the street. Mm -hmm. In this area here, there's a condo development right here. So if, if we did come out this way, we would have to come further and might do more disturbance within the, mm -hmm. you know, okay. the buffer zone in the, in the wetlands in this area. Because you probably would want them directly across from each other. Mm -hmm. Any other questions from the board? Continue. Okay. So with that, we come to the open space development. Um, so basically, we still have that existing 800 foot cul-de-sac right here. So basically, what we want to do is we want to come in 600 feet and then split 400 this way and 400 that way. Um, and then you can see the red is the, the outline of the developable area. And that's basically um, 19 acres in size, and the open space would be uh, roughly 26 acres in size, roughly. Um, we still have the, the shared septic system. Um, we do have the 19 lots. Um, this lot is included, but we were, we were going <coughs> to wonder if we could continue to use the existing driveway for access onto Wood Street. Um, but that was what that was a question. You know, more we're trying to get feedback for the layout. Um, on this one, there is no filling over here, so the only disturbance would be the filling for this main road, which is the 1400, and everything else is condensed into this this area here. So the only wetlands impact is that one drive, which is similar to what it was on the other. Correct. Yep. Yeah. I mean, we felt that, you know, this is 350 feet to here. We felt that that would be the shortest distance. And we would, we would uh, do improvements onto uh, Whisper Way to bring the, the uh, front portion of the road up to town because we're going to be using it with the road. So we would do, you know, we would pave and, and do like country drainage 
similar to what we're going to do for our development. We're going to do country drainage within our development, with infiltration basins. If I can, Jennifer, uh, the two cul-de-sacs at the end, mm -hmm. is there an issue with that in an open space plan? or? Um, <clears throat> So on face value, we allow, in open space, we allow cul-de-sacs at 1,000 feet, no more than 10 houses off each cul-de-sac. Um, how far up Whisper Way are you proposing to come off there? 350. So. And then six, in, 600 to here. And so I'm going to let the fire chief talk because he and I had a discussion earlier today about this, and he has some concerns about whether or not it's a thousand feet plus three hundred and fifty feet, or not. So I don't know if you want to address that, Chief. Sure. I guess it's just the uh, length of a single access that I just wanted to get some conversation around in the plan. So I was trying to understand the difference between the two plans and how far. So just my first take of it is that it's a single access for the entire distance from Wood Street. So I'm just trying to go through some of the regular subdivision that talks about the distance from where you have. Way. So to me, the throughway is, starts at Wood Street, mm -hmm. just by my mm -hmm. interpretation of seeing that. So, so I couldn't find the numbers on the plan, so uh, I was no, just trying to figure okay. out. What no, it, no, this is yeah, this is 350 to the intersection. I mean, you know. But then you're a complete 1,000 from correct there to there. So you know that's why we're here. We're trying to see what kind of mitigations would allow us to do this. If you want, you know, a double barrel. Right now, it's only it's a very narrow road and it's gravel. What we're going to do is we're going to pave it. We could make it wider, and that's you know that's why we're we're trying to get some feedback on on basically the layout and what what we would like to see, and then we can look at that. And what's the current width of the road? We talk about potentially widening it. You're 20 feet, right, Chief? If you look for 20 feet on a road, if you're, gonna, if you're gonna extend the width of the road, 20 feet, 18 to 20 feet, what's that? I think everything would come out of the road <coughs> bylaws. Uh, I think the minimum I see is a rural road, 20 feet. It's 20, So, right? um, yeah. This is essentially like driveway right now, isn't yeah, it? Like yeah, it's like 10 feet or something yeah. like that. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty narrow. Okay. It's only gravel. Yeah, yeah. And I think there's plenty of right of way there for you Correct. to do the widening. No, no mm -hmm. there, is, there is a right of way that's associated with yeah. that gravel. I took a photo today, Whisper Way. So I, I think your question is not easily answered, John. Yeah. Okay. I think um, I think some more research needs to happen in order to determine whether or not the fire chief's concern of adding it for, in, from Wood Street to the end of the cul-de-sac would make it 1350 yeah. versus 1000. And that would not be allowed. Okay. So we'd have to figure out that piece of it. Now, <coughs> if we look at, let's compare the prior plan. I get your read on the prior, just just as a looking at access roads and maybe there's some combination. Do you see, you wanna comment on the prior plan? Do you want to put that back up, Jen? You want to put it back yeah, up? Yeah, the prior plan didn't seem, I didn't see any uh, uh, contradictions to the, the things I looked for. Okay. Yeah. I'm assuming they're running water throughout it, like a, a town water. Well, we hope to be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good. So, yeah, it, that seemed pretty normal to me, not to jump out of it. So with this one, you don't, you don't have an issue with this one, with the access? You have two it looked like the, the loop was there, mm -hmm. so that it looks like the only single access is the beginning piece of Whisper Way, which is not unusual in my experience to see. Um, we have a few areas where less than 500 feet or something like that, that initial access. And you know, in a perfect world, you reduce the risk all the way by having two accesses. But if you have these conditions of wetlands and stuff, I understand that for that short distance. Now how do you feel about on the open space for a, a double double barrel road? Within? I'm not understanding the term double barrel, so well, sorry about oh, that. Oh, no, that's fine. So I think like Rocky Woods with a split entrance. entrance? Yeah, so, so, yeah, so the right. beginning so the beginning from uh, Wood Street back, you'd have probably a 12-foot wide lane, an island in the middle, and then another 12-foot wide, or we could go wider. 
So yeah. we, we don't typically mm -hmm. allow those. You don't allow town. those. Okay. Okay. Most of the risks that would come up that won't, you know, say I have a gas main <coughs> break or a large tree that comes across, it won't necessarily eliminate that risk. Mm -hmm. So that's just what I'm trying to work out for you. Okay. Mr. Chair, can you <coughs> comment on country drainage? Country drainage, okay. Uh, so basically country drainage, instead of using catch basins and manholes, basically we would have like a grass swale along each side of the road and you would pitch the runoff directly into the swale and then um, that would, and then at one point you would have a, like a drop inlet and it would go into the drainage and go to a basin. So mo it's more like trying to get rid of the catch basins and just yes. use the swales. So, so I don't have a comment for the planner. We know. Um, <laughs> uh, Legacy Farms did that, and to me it's an eyesore. Um, in fact, when I, every time I drive through there, I can't even look at the trees or the houses because I, I stare at this dirt on the side of the road. I'm like, it looks like it's still under construction, even though they, I don't know, Bryce here, but he's heard this before. Um, what kind of control do we have over the choices, whether a traditional or, because that's a, so we it, encourage. It's, a, it's a lid, right? Yeah, we encourage that kind of drainage in this town. So and why is that? Because it's better for the environment. It's you know a preferred Cheaper method in this day and age of, of drainage. So we've always encouraged it. You know, we it's less pavement. We like it. So the board would have to take an aggressive stance on why is it less pavement? He's not doing curbs. He's not doing you know. It's still the same things. width though. Right, but he's not putting in curbs. So, I mean, there's pavement right there. So, and then you've got the grass swales. So, I mean, the board would have to take an aggressive stance and be in an agreement that they don't want that kind I, of drainage anymore. I it. would question the direction of the town being that way, and I'd like to see some documentation where we actually encourage that because I think sure. that's the personal opinion from past members. And I, I don't think it's the way to go. I think it's just an easy out for the developer to get. <coughs> the There's subdivision regulations that requires that you encourage it, but I'll pull it up okay. for you. Thanks. Um, I think it's an interesting point, Mr. Chair, that um, so that's a great topic for us to get a little edu educated right. on the different choices because um, I have a tendency, with, I, I haven't seen it, so I don't, know the, I don't know what the complaints are with it, but I have a tendency to lean towards wanting the more environmentally sensitive, uh, less impact um, solution. So it'd be that would be interesting to see the, the okay. choices and where the decision points are in that. I would suggest take a ride down Legacy. No, I, I yeah. definitely. Would. <coughs> no, I think for this, <laughs> when we get into a discussion on that, it will start to get off. I call you as an expert. Um, <laughs> So <laughs> looking at this plan, would it, to calm the issue of the over a thousand feet, would there be an ability to off the left cul-de-sac to maybe at this point say, run a road down that you would had mentioned? In between that gap, we can look at that. But I mean, you want it paved or just emergency access? <coughs> gravel? No, I think it has to be paved. But you definitely talk. It's, we it's can a nice talk. advantage. Of. Yep. <coughs> I had a couple of questions when you were. Okay. Um, so I was curious um, about the distance in the bottom plan. There's the. Uh, the first plan, uh, the yield plan. There's three homes at the very top. Um, oh, I'm no, sorry, the, at the no, first the one, the yield plan. plan. There's three homes at the very top. Are, are they not a concern for fire safety? Like they seem pretty far from the Whisper Way. Or, but is it still less than the the was it a thousand feet? No, at the very very top. Uh, left. Upper left. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. <clears throat> well, I think the issue is that it meets. Because our there's regulations, because it's a driveway access, it's not a road. Right. Okay. All right. Then the other question: Could you point out there's some conservation land and a trail? I think on the other side of Whisper Way. Can you kind of point on out the where? Side? Yeah. Is yeah, there is. There's a up in the cul-de-sac. There, there is an area where you can park and you can walk. Walk on the trail. Yeah. So this lot here, this is a, this all abuts uh, conservation land. So this is conservation here as well as in the back. 
Okay. Um, and to get to that, we are requesting, you know, in the open space, we are asking for a 50 foot offset or a buffer zone just because of the shape of the lot. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, just along 495 and then along the back portion here. So in both scenarios, you're not proposing to pave up until the trailhead, right? You're just paving the bottom section? Right now, yes. Okay. Yep. You know, we're just proposing to improve up to here. Okay. And in the open space plan versus the conventional plan, through you, Mr. Chairman, uh, what are the biggest differences, other than what we've talked about here today? The lot number, the same amount of lots? S roughly the same amount of lots. Um, Density is a little bit more in the open space plan, I noticed. Well, density is it's more com it's more compacted. Um, wetlands we are disturbing less. We're basically disturbing a thousand less with the conventional. No, with, with the, the open space. space. Right, yeah, so we only have. Yep. And then um, between the open space and the conventional, we uh, total you know road wise, um, the conventional you have thirty five hundred linear feet of road. This we only have. 1400 so we decrease the impervious uh, a lot um, driveways would be a lot shorter um, houses are basically the same but the driveways would be a lot shorter than in that development uh, and we are in this we are, we are doing an open space of uh, 25 acres um, that one there is no open space if I can interrupt for one second we have a public hearing that should have started at 745. Mm -hmm. We'll delay that, if we can, until another couple of minutes. Um, but I just want to acknowledge there is a public hearing, but we want to continue on that. For you, Mr. Chair? Yeah. I'm just having a hard time orienting where, so that blue line is 495? Mm -hmm. This blue line? Yes. No, this blue line is, uh, this is RB and this is A. So okay, oh, okay. 495 is right here. Okay, thank you. So this is the south side. Thank you. Going south. Thanks. On the open space plan, have you done a calculation as to how much <clears> of the 25, 26 acres is upland and how much is wetland? I did do that calculation. Um, I think there's only um, eight acres of wetlands out of the 25. Thank you. Hmm. Yeah, Mr. Chair. Yes. Um, so with the wetland crossing, you'd have to do compensatory uh, wetlands. Uh, where would that be proposed? Uh, it would be proposed adjacent to the crossing. So, you know, right. we would have to, you know, this upland here. Yeah. So we would we'd probably construct it there in that location. Wherever you fill, you try to replicate in the right. same location. Through, through the chair. So talking about the buffers, that, that's not up to this board, it's up to the Conservation Commission. But um, do you have a plan that shows if they, if they hold you to the 100-foot buffer? Or is that a, a different plan altogether? Can you say that again? Uh, you were saying that you're hoping to get a 50-foot buffer with the wetlands. No, I was, I was hoping to get a 50-foot um, for the open space. I it's supposed to be 100 feet. Yeah. We were, we were uh, going to ask for a 50-foot buffer right. instead of a 100-foot buffer. And we, we're not going to change the buffer to the wetlands. No, 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 but uh, is there a, a plan showing what if they say no, as they might say no to that? Uh, is there a plan reflecting that? Um, I have done the plan, but I didn't bring it with me. So if I could get just looking at, at trying to wrap this up, any general comments, and I'll throw one out there, is the concern on access. So you know that's an issue, and that uh, is a concern. Um, any other issues with the open space plan that people have? I would like to request that we do see a plan B showing two options uh, because Conservation Commission makes that decision and, and we don't want to lead them one way or another. We need to see the whole, every scenario that's, that's possible right now um, just to have an, uh, an open field of what what's can be done so we can choose, help choose the best. Um, right now, without that, we really can't 
So uh, again, it's a question of coordinating with Conservation Commission, and uh, something we're trying to work on. Right. Any other? I guess I just had a thought about the um, about the existing trail. On, if, I'm just curious if other members of the community would like to have it, it paved up until the trailhead, even though it wouldn't be needed for the development, for, or if they prefer, that would be more asphalt that maybe you wouldn't want, or if they would prefer to just keep it gravel. So, feedback from uh, would that be uh, halt? feedback from the community? The, from the community, mm -hmm. I guess. Okay. Yeah. Hey, Goldman, talking to the Area Land Trust. A couple questions. Um, in this plan, you plan to um, improve the road to the 350-foot point. Is that what I heard? That's correct. Mm -hmm. On this side of the road, down here, is open space that belongs to the town and the land trust has a conservation restriction on it. And if you were going to widen this road, um, you could not violate the, the, um, the area which is owned by the town and covered by a conservation restriction. So any widening of the road would have to go toward the east um, there is also a parking area in here, about the 350-foot point for six cars as a trailhead, and we would like to preserve the trees that are there in the in the open space. So you really can't violate that particular piece of the open space as well. Um, the other question I have for Mr. Nation through you, Mr. Chairman, yes. is that this is going to be an open space plan if, if approved. Um, are you planning to give the open space to the town or to a homeowners association or to a 501c3 conservation organization? Um, I think I've always been pretty much steered uh, by the planning board on that and I, I think that uh, it usually goes to the town. Okay. I think that's how it's, <coughs> and that's what I'd prefer to do. It's the only three choices you have, so mm -hmm. I'm just curious to know where, where you're going with that. Any other questions? I'm just trying to see the difference between the, there's quite a bit of elevation change in this plan, and sometimes the elevation changes are challenging, and I'm just kind of curious maybe if there's a potential advantage in one plane or another, how right. much elevation change you have to deal with when you're accessing, so it's, a little not quite seen here. It looks like maybe the open space plan might relieve some of that, but I'm not quite sure. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so that, that's kind of a positive for me if it yeah. relieves some of that steep elevation that I have to access. Okay. Yeah. We can meet with you too. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah, I can't quite <coughs> get it all with this okay. a lot of contour we'll, here. We'll work on that. Okay. We'll work on that. Any other questions? Have we. Um, so confused I, you enough? What's that? Have we confused you enough? Um, no, I think we're all right. Um, so uh, on the on the uh, low impact development, I think is what we call it, not country drainage. Right? Correct. Um, so a couple of examples to look at might be um, uh, Hunter's Ridge off of South Mill, and uh, one that we're building now. And, um, and another one would be uh, Penny Meadow Lane. It's a road that we reconstructed. It was a falling apart road, and, and it didn't have any drainage, so we did the, the swales. And um, I think I think it, it can be done. It's not an easy yeah. thing to do. Right. It's, it's um, sometimes I prefer to put drainage in, you know, pipe, and just be done with it. I, I, I it's think a, it's almost impossible to keep the winter sand and salt from going off. To the outside yeah. the road surface, right? So, to your point, I mean, maybe yeah. if we if you do go with the low impact design, maybe you could do a um, curbs where you can, right, where it doesn't affect the, mm -hmm. the drainage flow. So maybe it could be like a compromise or something. Yeah, and then you so then you're uh, you're you're focusing, you're, you're channeling all of the drainage to hit that one spot, and it just causes a road, and then it, it we've we. Got out of doing that and a job of doing in Norfolk, and um, it just 
Somebody suggested that, and then we just the engineer to. I appreciate the feedback. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Kind of along those lines, um, I'd encourage you to talk to the Conservation Commission about what kind of plantings you might be able to put along the edge to <coughs> maybe dress it up, have it look a little nicer, but still have the same function. Well, um, yeah, well, we'll talk to conservation, of course, but um, what we have done is we sawed the bottom of the, of the soil. We put the sod down and it's, it, you know, it's get plenty of water. Once the things are, sta it takes forever to get them stabilized. You're constantly battling this, you know, the big rain comes and everything you've done washes away and so you keep going back and back and back. So we've, we've just, uh, we've just started doing, putting sod in there. Mm -hmm. Mm. Most chance of it washing away. Right. Okay. Uh, a good thing about, through the chair, a good thing about working with Mr. Nation is, is that Craig was on the Conservation Commission for like five years. <coughs> Excuse uh, me. And Excuse you were maybe on it for a while. Um, no. So, but they're pretty responsive and they, they're very understanding of, of the environment. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. And, and uh, the only follow up point I would make is the two you referenced are probably pretty quiet roads. Penny Meadow. Oh, so yeah. so yeah. something yeah. like Legacy North Farms Road would be a lot more traffic, so there would be a lot more sand and a lot more salt. So no question. Maybe it works in some areas, but not others. So. <coughs> yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Great. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Appreciate those waiting for the public hearing. Mm -hmm. Jennifer, full introduction. <coughs> We have to open the meeting. Make a motion to open the meeting. I'll move to open the public hearing. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. So carried. Well, just we have a <laughs> we have a public hearing oh. just to continue the. <laughs> like, um, so our, we have a public hearing for our scenic road permit to remove, I believe it's two trees um, and a portion of the stone wall. I believe the stone wall will then be re restored after the project is finished. Um, this is to connect the home to the municipal sewer system. Um, this is also uh, a joint hearing um, under the public shade tree law that I believe um, our tree warden was unable to attend this evening for personal reasons, but he did send um, comments that he had no issues, I believe. Um. How you doing? Good, welcome. <laughs> yeah, just uh, sewer time, the house transferred ownership and the, you know, the sewer stubs on the Roadside, of the, you know, the stone wall. So, oh, the eight foot section of the stone wall just has to be taken apart. And I took pictures, and um, it will be put back the same day. And uh, right. two two trees, one like this and one like that, hickory trees. And okay. uh, and just to follow up, tree warden had no issues correct. with the trees. That's Any questions from the board? Uh, Mr. Any plans to replace those trees? Once um. Whatever you recommend. To, to, to follow up on that too, Mr. Chair. But I think we usually recommend when trees are taken down that you put a, plant new ones elsewhere. Okay. To kind of compensate for yep. it. So yep. that works out. What, whatever you recommend. I know the homeowners that live there don't live there anymore. And, you know, so much money was put in, in escrow. I think there was like an extra, you know, $500 for stuff. And, um, Sounds like the right amount of money. Yeah, well, <laughs> so when we did when we gave the, the price before, we didn't uh, we didn't know the trees, you know, and now so but whatever you recommend. I, I go back to the homeowner, he said whatever it takes, you know, to smooth this along. We can make conditional on Yeah, I'm just trying to pull up the last one we did because we did condition that in the last one. Um, yeah, whatever. I have a couple I went, questions. I went, I went Wait, to Frank Tense. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I got a call by one of the neighbors, and um, I didn't get a chance to drive by and check it out myself, so I'm sorry. But the 14 inch tree, they're saying uh, they, they reject their, what the tree warden said. Um, so I would like to ask uh, if there could be straps or something that could be put on the tree for safety, because you're concerned about the trees being too close to the digging and caving in. Yeah. And so I don't know about the root systems, and it looks like from your drawing, perhaps the larger tree could be strapped back so it doesn't fall. 
the sewer stub's 10 feet deep in the ground, so I kind of have to make the hole wide, so it's safe mm -hmm. to go down. So, and that tree is... But it's near enough to the edge of where you're doing it that, uh, that I would like to ask. I agree that it should be looked at for alternative ways to not cut down a 14-inch tree. It's just, it's right yeah. there, and it's just... Not right from your drawings. It's right. on the edge. Well, I have a picture of it. And, I, and about the stonework, you do wonderful work, so I know that's that's oh, fine. Thank you. I just have that one question about yeah. the one one of the yeah, trees. No, it, it's right there. Uh, like I said, uh, the sewer stuff's ten feet deep, so the hole's just got to be wide to be safe uh, for anybody to go down and put the trench box in. Um, through you, Mr. Chair, I did yes. drive by today, um, and those two little trees. Um, kind of come out at an angle yeah. and there's a, there's other trees more established trees around it that are I mean I'd, I'd be delighted to be honest with you if we had a, a another oh, tree to replace it that was in a more stable location and was more situated because they're That's both exactly. coming they're both small yeah and they're angling they're out they're sad. angling out over the road it, it really honestly feels like it's a, an improvement if we got another tree it would be <coughs> just, yeah. Okay, I'm assuming that this is a 14 inch. Yeah. Just to, for my clarification, and that's a seven inch, and that, that's a six. No, that not that tree. This yeah. tree and that tree yeah, right two there. Yeah, trees. And that's the sewer stub where that green mark is right there. And I gotta go 10 feet deep, and that's about three feet away. So from that's it. that tree's not involved at all. Nope, not that tree at all. Okay, so that that's what I was going by these lines. Yeah, no. Uh, so you're talking about two those with two, the, two with the yellow tape on them right there. That little one and that one right oh, there. It's yeah. black and white on our version. So. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Sorry. Right, yeah. Uh, thank you. Yeah. All right, all right so I, I'm on I'm on the same page. Okay. Thank you, Jen. Could I so just bring just one thing up? It's when I drove by it today. Um, there's another lot, just a couple or maybe a couple lots down that also has some trees marked for possible demolition and it was confusing to me driving by to see which mm -hmm. ones were being removed yeah. so in case any members of the public are listening and thinking so like a much larger tree <laughs> that public hearing is at your next meeting which okay. is June 26th okay I looked it up when I got home and could see it was a different lot but <laughs> <laughs> I had my son leaning out taking pictures so I could straighten out so Jennifer you so the condition we use typically use is as mitigation for tree removal the applicant shall plant and maintain two shade trees on the front of the lot on private property, the species and size of the trees shall be subject to the approval of the tree warden. Okay. Okay. Do you, Mr. Chair, just out of curiosity, why is this a failing septic system? Uh, they transferred ownership and you in town, they transfer ownership, they make you die in the town sewer. Okay. Yeah. Something new today. Yeah. And then I'll also put a, if the board's amenable, a condition that even though he has said he's going to put the stones back, that the stones be put condition. back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they'll be back the same day, they'll be put back. So we need a motion to approve the temporary removal of the eight foot section of stone wall, the removal of the two trees with the condition that the wall be uh, reassembled, for lack of a better term, but two trees approved by the tree warden uh, replace the two trees coming down. We have a motion. So so move. Can I just ask a question? Is there a timing factor on the trees? Not I mean, it's it just but because if they like depends on planting season. season. Yeah. And okay. I think it's mostly taken on good faith. Okay. If a year from now they're not, <laughs> we drive by and they're not there, we can. They're you want uh, two back, back the same property? <clears throat> on the same property, but on private property, not on the, yeah. the town property. Yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah, no problem. I'll, that'll be done before I even leave the job. Okay. Do the whole you can't put it back at your house. you got to go on the truck. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, that's all right. <laughs> so we have a motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? So carried. Thank you. Right. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. <coughs> oh, you have to close the public oh. hearing, too. Motion to close the public hearing. Second. Thanks. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Thank you. Uh, Thank you, John. You're welcome. Nine minutes late. Uh, just to reaffirm, 
So um, we have received a letter within your packages from Saddle Hill Realty Trust, a Realty LLC, that they have requested to withdraw their application for an open space landscape preservation development special permit and a flexible community development special permit on Saddle Hill Road um, as previously submitted. Um, so I just need you to vote to accept the withdrawal without prejudice. Is there any explanation as why? Um, yeah, I just don't know if I can explain it. <laughs> <laughs> um, they just have decided to go in a different direction and they will likely be reappearing before you with an A&R plan. With the, I think it was 11? 11 lots. Okay. Mm -hmm. Get a motion. Motion to uh, accept Step. the um, withdrawal of the uh, proposal. Without the prejudice. Yeah. 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 That would be complicated if we reject it. It doesn't really do you any good to yeah. reject it. We have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, abstain. So carried. And he was making an announcement because we that we withdrew allowed the withdrawal of Chamberlain Whalen tonight at eight o'clock was the official continuation time of that previous hearing. He okay. just make that announcement that it will be rescheduled for it's rescheduled for the next meeting. Yes, for those so, well I think you just made the announcement, <laughs> so I can just reiterate the Chamberlain Whalen uh, hearing is scheduled for the next meeting. At eight at eight o'clock. Um, next on the item, uh, Mr. McDowell. Mr. McDowell, do you want to come, come up? Yeah. Why don't you, Jennifer, talk about what is an ANR for the new members of the, <laughs> of the board? Plan where approval is not required. Okay. <laughs> uh, subdivision approval is not required. That means that the lots have frontage on a public way already. Um, and so you are just basically signing that to say that. And now, why do you add what happens if we don't sub? It gets automatically approved in two weeks. Okay. No By the town clerk. There can't be any new roadways built, correct? Correct. There's no roadway construction. And I can let Mr. McDowell explain why he's doing this at this juncture. You sure. Want? Thank you. Roy McDowell representing Legacy Farms. I'm actually here this evening for uh, two items. One is the ANR plan. The other is you should have received two copies of land restricted covenants. Right. Uh, one is for natural state parcels A1 through 4, and the other is restored land, which you have plans of these also. Uh, one of the, the A&R plan is actually the next phase of a portion that we'll be selling to Pulte. We'll probably be coming to you over the next few years with A&R plans as every nine months we do a takedown with Pulte. So we'll be going through this process with you every nine months. And the other thing that's very important, as, as part of the master plan special permit, there are covenants where we have to dedicate portions of land with each closing as certain categories of open space, whether it's a restored open space or various types of open space, and that's reflected on these other plans. The other thing we have to do as we go through the process, and one of these plans shows the remaining portions of land on Legacy South that we're now deeding in as restricted land. So the goal is to get to, through the end of this process, and we're quickly getting there, is to get to 500 acres of dedicated open space. And Jennifer, I'm not quite sure where we are at this point, but we're quite don't. a ways there. <coughs> yeah, we're, we're close, but I don't have the exact yeah. calculation. So anyway, we, we keep tabs on that, and I can get that specific information for you. So the goal this evening, uh, it's your pleasure is if we could get a signed copy of the in our plan for recording and approval and signatures on these two restrictions, these will then get signed and get recorded at the Registry of Deeds. So where you said you have two, I have like five here. I have the South Side and the North Side. That's right. That's, that's right. right. Okay. I, I mean, there's two actually five right. the North Side. Right, and the, the rest of the South. Okay. Why don't you, Jennifer, touch on the since brought together the restricted uh, land covenants. I think Roy just did a pretty yeah. good job of it. Okay. I don't know, I, can add, I can't really add much yeah. else. I mean, these are, I mean, the language has already been reviewed and approved by town council. This is, you know, standard language that you've used in other restricted covenants. Um, I've reviewed the plans um, with the decisions as approved by, you know, planning board and they all match up, so. You know, I'm ex I'm satisfied that these are ready to be signed and, and recorded. If you'd like, Mr. Chairman, I can elaborate a little bit. 
So when you look at the restricted land, some of the categories, obviously buildable areas, buildable area. But then we have agricultural areas. There are areas where it's going to stay in sort of a natural state with trees and landscape and that type of thing. Uh, natural state, very similar. Other, other than it won't be used for agricultural purposes. Uh, restored or landscaped, that'll be areas where it's restored, there's lawn or fields or that type of thing. Then there's restored landscape, which is a very small piece, which is called private portion. There are small pieces where it may not be necessarily for public access, but it's being maintained as private space slash restored land. Okay. And those are generally the categories. Any questions? This is actually a very detailed prescribed formula. It was done over many years with right. the planning board, which is within the master plan special permit. All these forms were promulgated by Elaine and others with the planning board many years ago. Right. Which is why the, through the chair, the format is almost cookie cutter because it's the same Correct. agreement. We get a, uh, do we need a separate motion or can yeah, we Yeah, I can, I just do a vote to accept the plan of land for the A&R plan as submitted. So moved. Second. <coughs> Discussion. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Opposed, abstain. So Aye. Aye. Two people, at least two people to sign that with the date. Two of our new people should sign. <laughs> 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 they signed already. Keep on signing. Signing. Right. Yeah, get, get, get your signatures on the registry of these. Oh yeah. boy. <laughs> That's exciting. It'll be in perpetuity. Then we just need a vote to authorize the chairman to sign um, for the planning board to accept the um, restricted land covenants for the as submitted for the north side and the south side. Motion. So moved. Second. Any discussion? So we moved up here. So we're going to take a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. So carry. So a uh, point of order, though the paperwork Jim. itself, the chair signs, right? Just the chair. Yes. Jen, we sign here. Yep. And a date. And the date on that. Mr. Chairman, so could yes. I give you? Could I give the board an update on our progress on Legacy Farms Road itself? Yes. Well, to raise some of the David's concerns. Oh. Um, Thank you. As you know, the Town and Gauge of Services of West Hill and Sampson, who were the original engineers for the road back a few years ago. And we have a, a significant, not significant, we have a punch list of items that the West Hill and Sampson wants taken care of, uh, of which we also have some trees. Uh, there might be 10 or 12 trees that we have to replace. So the trees will be done very shortly. We've had some ongoing work being done out there. We've actually, frankly, added some things to that punch list. We found some correct uh, manhole covers, which we've replaced. You know, I guess when you ride track machines up and down a road, it tends to break the covers. So we've replaced some sewer covers, some drain covers. We've uh, cleaned out some swales. We've, we've gone through a significant amount of the punch list. We're going to actually meet with Weston and Sampson out on the site next week and do a complete walkthrough <coughs> end to end to make sure we get everything that's on the list. Uh, we are going to come back to the planning board with some thoughts and suggestions by the, we now have, by the way, we now have the Homeowners Association and the Landowner Association, but the Homeowners Association has been very proactive in meeting with us with their wants, needs, and desires. We have a couple of leaching fields they'd like to make into soccer fields. So we told them we'll clean up the rocks and do some minor grading, but we're not going to go in there and create a full-blown seeded, sodded soccer field. If that's something they want to talk to you about, for the conservation commission they came. No in. field turf. No field turf. <laughs> no, no, no turf. <laughs> um, so you know, there's things like that. The one of the things when we pave the road that they have significant concerns about, and frankly we do too, because when you when you did when we, the road was originally designed, and you've got uh, I'll call them rumble strips in a few places, and I'll, I'll bring these planes into the planning board at some point and discuss them. When you see the interaction and how the road is used, at the entrance on East Main Street, the way cars and trucks come in, uh, at the circle, the way people go around, uh, we're going to have some suggestions per our engineers and, frankly, letters from our neighbors on some of those surfaces they'd like to see a little differently. I'll give you an example. When you're coming down Legacy from, well, it doesn't matter which direction, if you're coming from East Main or if you're coming from Clinton Street, there's a big circle there. There's a big beech tree in the middle and do some more flowers and things later. It called these, I'll call them mini islands. 
is you approach the service by these little islands. Now we can put them in. We think it's a real danger. The neighbors don't want them. We're thinking maybe when we pave it, we can do that yellow striping and marking. And there's a few places like that where the neighbors think that it's problematic. I think it'll be problematic in the winter for sure, but I want to come back to you. But I don't want to do that till I've met with Weston and Sampson. I've met with the neighbors and I've met with uh, our engineers to come back with an appropriate recommendations for the board to consider. Once, once we've got all that done and whatever considerations are accepted, we want to get that road paved before uh, October. Okay. And then once the road is paved, because I'll, frankly, I'll agree with David, the shoulders look like crap, pardon my language. They really do. I mean, three or four feet on either side is just, it's not even grass, it's just compacted dirt. And part of the reason for that, in my opinion, is all the construction that's gone for the last four years, every contractor and his brothers, his <coughs> trucks, his cars, whatever, on those two shoulders, and they've never been able to get seated properly. So now that the construction on the south side is done, every, ho every home has been sold on the south side. So now the south side is done, we pave the road. We're going to go and reloam both shoulders all the way through, and we're going to hydro seat it, and we're going to put in stakes to keep people from driving on it till the grass is taken. So I think you'll find a much, much more attractive looking road when we're finished. What's the timeline on that road? We won't have that all done before the end of fall. Mm -hmm. I the chair, I have a comment through the chair about the, um, the little divider things. I, I would tend to agree with you. I would think that would be a problem for plowing in the winter. And not just plowing, but if you look at the way the cars and trucks come in off of East Main Street and the other side, I'm concerned somebody's going to just drive right over and hit a car on the other side because, you know, they're raised up a bit and they're just enough, big enough, they're small enough to be not noticed so well, yet high enough to cause accidents. So I just think that's, that's a real problem in the making. If but you'll show us the, where there's oh, yeah, well, we, can't, we can't do anything about your approval. Okay. If, if I may, through the board, uh, a couple questions. Right. Um, like a louder here. Yeah. <laughs> um, <clears throat> first of all, if um, there are any changes and stuff, and there are people making comments, we haven't heard any comments, so we would be, we'd be open to any comments. From no, no, we'll bring actually letters or a letter from the chair of the sure. homeowner association. I had a meeting with them about a week ago. But I have a question. What's the difference between the homeowners association and the landowners association? If you could explain that. Uh, that's a good question. So you actually have homeowners association which is the individual villages which control I'll call it their neighborhoods and you have the landowner association which uh, is now the principles of legacy farms LLC uh, at some point in time when we get further enough along we're going to transfer the landowner association over to basically almost the equivalent of the homeowners, except it'll be the landowners. And at the same time, at some future point in time, we're going to take the private wastewater treatment facility, turn that over to another entity which is part of the homeownership also. The end, at the end of the day, the control of the land, the sewer treatment plant, and the villages will frankly be in control of the homeowners. Because when we, when we first built the sewer treatment plant, uh, we had to put in a fairly significant sum of money into a reserve account of five or $600,000. It was significant. And that gets added to every year. It's called, it's called a replacement fund. So at some point in time down the road, that'll be a couple of million dollars. And what that's for is sooner or later, there's replacement of equipment in the facility, there's replacement of fields. <coughs> and under DEP rules and regulations, that money has to be sitting there held in an escrow account at all times. Thank you. Oh, one last question. Uh, they're asking for additional soccer fields over leaching fields. Is that along Clinton Street? I'm oh, sorry, say that again? The homeowners are asking for additional fields over the leaching fields. No, if you know, um, off of behind the homes on Legacy Farms near Clinton, behind those homes, is there are two leaching fields there. Okay, in an in interior of the, of the property. Yes, and right now it's just field grass and weeds and whatever, and it gets mowed maybe once a month or something like that. I think what they'd like to do is they'd like to smoothen it out, seed it, probably mow it weekly type of thing. And uh, Is that on the treatment center side or the home side? It's it's on the opposite side. Treatment center? <laughs> yeah, it's on the opposite it's side. Treatment side. If you're, if you're actually coming to Legacy Farms Road from Clinton Street, yes. if 
you drove in maybe a few hundred feet and you took a right on the first street on the right, it's right smack in front of you. You okay. can't see it from Legacy Farms Road. Okay. Now we are going to be going back to DEP very soon because right now we're going to be expanding the sewer treatment plant inside the building itself. We're adding what's called more membranes. That'll happen this fall. Sometime probably next spring we're going to be adding more tanks outside. It'll be all underground. So we're going to, DEP is going to approve that. We're going to put more tanks in our front because what we're doing now that the north side has started, we've got to finish the remaining aspects of the treatment plant and the leaching fields for the north side. Capacity. And that'll happen in the next six to 12 months. We're going to be adding two more leaching fields on the back side of, um, you know, if you come in from East Main Street, do you know where the senior living is? Okay. You get that parcel there, and then adjacent to that, we have a six acre, I'll call it sort of commercial retail parcel. On the very back side of that, quite a, quite a ways back, almost to where the rail, the rail trail is, if you will. Parallel to that, we're going to be putting in uh, another 100,000 gallons of leaching in there. Okay. But when it's done, it'll just look like a field. Okay. Any other questions for Roy? Okay. Just a real general question, doesn't really relate to anything, but the villages, <laughs> I think you had Building 5 in Legacy North, and I think they're going to actually be named, right, so people will know their names. <laughs> in <laughs> South, is, how many villages are there? And are, I mean, yes, I think, one I think there are six. Six? Okay. There are, two, there are 275 homes on the south side, uh, 15 of which are single-family homes. The rest are condominiums. There are 240 rental apartments, and there are 115 senior living units. So, Chuck, but in your opinion, Legacy North will probably, people will be referring to the villages, but Legacy South, they probably won't refer to the villages, right? I don't think so. I think Legacy North is, a, is if you've driven through, has a whole different look. Right. You know, it's actually some spectacular views looking to the north. I just saw it today. It's I mean, isn't that spectacular? Like the three rolling hills <laughs> in the distance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the nice thing is, frankly, because the way the land rolls down away from Legacy Farms Road, you're going to look right over the houses because the house is going to be way below the, the viewscape. So I think that's going to look nice. Uh, sometime maybe later this year, we're probably going to want to come back and visit with you and talk about the 180 age restricted units on the north side. We've uh, been talking to a number of parties about that. Uh, I know there's been sort of some indication on the part of, I'll say, some potential members of the planning board and others in town. It might be nice to get somebody out of the Bolte just to be building. So we have been engaging other parties to look at doing something on the north side. Be a different look, a different feel. and. I think maybe a little different tenor. So when the time is right, we'll definitely be coming and speaking to you about that. Two other items to kind of wrap it all up. Uh, we are talking to a few folks on the East Main Street piece where the uh, senior living is on the retail component, okay, okay. commercial component. Last but not least, we have a house at 83 East Main Street, the last little piece of the puzzle. Uh, we tried to get a demolition permit uh, maybe nine months ago to tear it down. I went through it with the building inspector, the sills are all rotted, the rafters are rotted. Uh, it's got asbestos siding on it, which obviously is not original. It's got a slate roof, which is obviously not original. I think the only thing original is the frame and maybe some of the roof girders, the roof rafters. So I think that the we get denied a demo permit because part of the master plan special permit required it to be maintained unless the Historic Commission and or the Planning Board, of course, Selectman agreed to let it be demoed. Uh, I want to meet soon with the uh, Historic Commission and see if they would allow us to maybe contribute some money to, a I don't want to use the word legitimate, but another project in town where maybe money could be put towards something to make a real difference. My concern is by the time we strip that thing down, to, if you ever saw what it's going to look like when we went down, you'd say, why did we do this? Because it's not going to look anything like it. Um, the other thought was, if they could let us do that, we would design something in its place in conjunction with a retail component, because that is a retail commercial lot, that would be in harmony and sympathy with what is there, visually. So I just say that to the planning board, so if you hear us going to the Historic Commission, you'll know why. Okay. If I could comment through the chair, um, I hear lots of things about that, and there's no one that wants what you're, you're saying. People want you to, to do what you agree to do. It's an historic building, 
It was a building on Peach Street, and uh, formerly Peach Street, and uh, there's a there's opposition to it if if if, if you're if you're asking or, or talking about it and then sharing that information with you, it's... Well, I, I, I'm cognizant of that, but I think what I'd like to do, look at worst case scenario, I say worst case, depending on your perspective. If, if we have to stay by the letter of, of the agreement and strip that thing down to a shell and just reclad it, that's what we're going to do. <coughs> I'm suggesting we might get a better product if we can just get rid of it, do something architecturally in harmony with that look, same roof line, same everything, except it'll just be, frankly, a new structure, you know, with the appropriate siding, the proper roofing, for appropriate everything. Because right now I've got rotted sills, rotted uh, rafters, uh, sagging bowing, uh, bowed out foundations, and I'm, I'm asking myself, is, is, it, is it the intent to keep the, the visual harmony? Because when I'm done, you're going to have brand new windows, brand new siding, brand new roof, brand new everything, which will be no different than what I do that's brand new. The only difference is I'm going to have a better building that, than the other way around. Now, if the Historic Commission says no, then so be it. Through you, Mr. Chair. Yes. Well, first of all, is it the house in the northwest corner that are It's the one with the aqua color shutters on it? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Um, so, second follow-up question. If it remains a house, what would it be used for? It's not going to remain a house. Okay. Well, what would it be used for either way? Uh, if, if we you if, have to refinish it. Well, if, if we got it, we'll probably tear out the second story inside. We can do whatever we want right, inside. Right, right. Uh, it'll probably it could be a real estate office, it could be commercial office, it could be a restaurant, okay. it could be some retail component. Yeah. Okay. We'll, we'll build a building adjacent to it, just part of it, and tie it all together like a little village, if you will, with a small amount of parking up front. Thanks. The, the decision of that, Mr. Chairman, the decision of that is a historical commission making that. Um, it's yes, not sir. just the historical commission. It's, it's part of the master plan. Exactly. No, I take that back. I think it's in the host community agreement. So it's, it's really a decision for the selectmen. But frankly, unless the historic commission goes along, I, I wouldn't expect the selectmen to do that. Got it. So if we can't convince the historic commission of the wisdom of some yeah. ideas we have, then we won't pursue it. So, can I, so we don't have purview over this. It would either be the historical commission or the selectmen. Yeah, correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. Am I giving you too much data, Don? No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, good to be aware. Who denied the the demolition? Uh, well, the, the or have you not the applied? Building oh. The building department oh. denied it after they get a letter from the concom. Okay. Except not come from the historic commission. Okay. Thank I you. mean, I frankly, I, I don't know that it was denied or it was withdrawn. It was you were asked to withdraw it. <laughs> However, we want to put it. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a difference. Well, look, at, I, don't, I don't want to, frankly, I don't want to leave the house sitting the way it is. So either we're going to get everybody on board to tear it down, or we're going to get everybody on board to restore it. So one way or the other, we're going to do something with it. Cause and, and, and frankly, as a kid, I collected period pieces of antiques and clocks and things like that. So I, I'm sort <coughs> of a historic restoration buff. I did a building in Waltham. It's called. It was called Grove of Florence. It was a, a 1920s <coughs> limestone facade and low retail building. And I did what's called a facadectomy, where we literally bolted the, the facade to the sidewalk, tore the whole building down, left the whole facade in place, built a brand new building behind it, bolted it to the new building. Probably cost $400,000, but it was great. So it's not so much the money as it is at the end of the day. Are we going to get anything different the way I'm proposing it than if we did it to something that's going to be nothing other than brand new anyway? Yeah. Okay. Mr. Chair, yes, different question to ask. Yes, okay. Um, that's the last side, question. Wait, sidewalks along East Main Street. Yes, um, the we we actually engage an engineer to review all that um, Boulder engineering, and that's ready to go to Concom with. So we have to actually probably work closely with this board in CONCOM because now part of the land we're putting in the front of is now owned by the town. You know, it's that part. I'll call it the athletic field parcel. What's going to happen is in meetings with John Westling last year, we've designed the sidewalk going from where it stops now all the way down to where it is down by the athletic field parcel. And basically what it is is 
there's a there's a uh, the street, there's a fog line, there's a space, and there's a guardrail. What we're going to do is berm along the street, have a raised sidewalk all the way down. The only thing is down at the very end, uh, where the piece of land is we gave to the town, that guardrail needs to be moved back about four feet. But at the same time, it really shouldn't be done until we understand what the town is doing for the access. Because I know the, uh, I think it's, is it the Athletic Commission or some commission? Parks and Rec. Parks and Rec. Parks and Rec. <coughs> they, they were engaging a firm to design an entrance. They're in front of Concom right now. Okay, because until that's designed, mm -hmm. I don't know how it's going to interact. So I think once that's approved, then we can coordinate the two plans. What, the road just not wide enough at that point? Well, it's not just not wide enough. I don't know how the sidewalks can interact with what they're doing to get into the site. But but you said the, to move the guardrail. You said the guardrail needed to be moved back. Is that well, the guardrail's going to be moved back because the road's not wide enough. Yes, correct. Okay. It's going to sidewalk in four or five feet. But right. What happens is you've got that I'll call it a man-made swale brook that's going to be moved back, and there's a stone sort of riprap slope that's going to be moved back four feet into the stone slope, which is probably six feet from the water. Great. Thanks for the update. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Right. Look forward to working with uh, our new group. Mm -hmm. It's like old home week. Yeah. <laughs> I, we only go back to 2007. That's <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. I Chairman, would you wait, should I get those tomorrow? Or? Yeah, I have to um, notarize the signature. Oh. Um, but Thank you. I'm not until the afternoon. Not until the afternoon, so if you come later in the day. Thank when you. did the last home sell in the south recently? Right. Say again. The last home in the south legacy farm just sold. You said. I was it recently sold. Just recently, the last one. Nice. <coughs> so, yeah. I don't think they closed yet. Right. Thank you. Thank you. By the way, the sales are going very well on the north side also. Okay. I think they had. Uh, Sales last month, and wow. quite a few up before. They're building six model homes. Must be that view. Cool. It's nice. I think it's a view, and I think it's, uh, it's, it's a nice neighborhood up there. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Next on the agenda is approve the minutes from May 8th. I had a couple questions on that. Um, and Deputy, the, uh, Steve just left, but I think it was Deputy Miller. Um, on the road, um, first of all, they're excellent, Kobe. Um, so when I say I have questions, I don't know. Um, I think he said he didn't care if there was a through road, but if there was a through road, then it needed to be 20, 20 feet. I thought that was at least an interesting, you know, important piece to hold on to, that he wasn't necessarily um, married to the fact that it needed to be a through road, but if it did connect, it needed to be. So is that feet. not in there, or is it misstated? It says it, it says it needs to be 20 feet, but I don't think the piece of it not necessarily needing to connect is in there. Okay, what page is that? Oh, that would have been great if I had done that, huh? Yeah, I think I, it's page four of the minutes, I think. Of I'm site. sorry, any what page? Like, page four of the minutes. Thank 80, you, 82, 82 of the packet. Okay. Um, <coughs> yeah, thank you. Um, but it was talking about between 12 feet and 20 feet and then 18 at the school, that whole thing. But he had said that he didn't necessarily care if the road connected, and I don't think that piece is in the right. minutes. I, I don't, I don't I understand why it. he didn't care. Right? <laughs> right? <laughs> what? Oh, oh, it's up here. It's up here. It'll be up here. I know what they're saying. It'll, I'll talk. Just star that and ask me tomorrow. <laughs> okay. You got, you got me. I know what you're saying. Yeah. Um, C gen. No, C gen. The, um, the other question that I had on them um, for, the, um, for the site visit, I think Mr. Wiseman had said the majority of the board was at the site visit. I don't think that they were. That's factually what he said. I, I but I don't saying, think, I regardless if that's what he said, that's what has to go in the minutes. No, that's fine. Okay. But could we, could we note that it was not necessarily the so? The minutes have or? to be a reflection of what happened at the meeting. Okay. Right. Well, we can Just, make an amendment, a, a note at this meeting saying that uh, you, you, the, I can write it the in the minutes, minutes of tonight's this. meeting can reflect. Yeah, your I don't concern, know how I don't know yeah. how big a deal it is, but I just remember I was trying to think. I don't think a majority of the board was at the site at the site visit, so it just in the interest of Were accuracy, put I was. I took him to mean that on, on the site visit, but also have seen the site. I wasn't on the site visit, but I had right. been there. I think it might have been four of us. Yeah. I think it was only four. Uh, so I, I'm happy with it being in tonight's minutes. Okay, mm -hmm. that's fine. 
And we didn't take minutes at the site walk, right? Because it was no, not, no agenda. Not <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't there. Yeah, yeah, right. I, think there was a, yeah. I, I have one correction or at least addition. Oh, excellent. I have a clarification through the chair. <coughs> uh, on page 88, when... Um, what page of the minutes? minutes? Oh. Ten of the minutes. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, I refer to my apology to Ken. Um, because uh, uh, there's a page. As a member of the community preservation, I had voted in favor of the press for additional parks for funded for additional. I think he's mumbling. He noticed that he was mistaken, uh, and then. There was more that I had said, but maybe because there was some crosstalk and vacuuming in the hallway. Um, <laughs> uh, I was shown the actual minutes. Oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> I, I may not have said that, but, um, but I definitely said in the meeting that uh, because I, it, I read a misinformation in a news, news article, which is exactly what happened. So. Um, Can you write that up for her, Frank, how you want it to okay. read? Write up how you want it to read. He noted that, that he to her. knows he's mistaken due to the news article. Yeah. Could you get that to me tomorrow? Well Otherwise, done. I get in trouble with the minute. Yeah. yeah. Town <laughs> meeting. Town <laughs> meeting. Nobody discussed the town meeting. Yes. Uh, motion to approve the minutes as amended. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? So carry. That's not the thank you letters. Oh, um, nice. If you guys want to sign this. <coughs> might as well. I was hoping Kevin comes tonight as being a butter for the uh, Ash Street project. For the trees? Yeah. Any other uh, so we all items send for the, the member? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. um, I, I have a question, question. Um, on the process. Start. Um, start. Um, start. For, in particular, it does relate to the proposed development between Chamberlain and Whalick. But I have a, it's a question that is more general in my mind um, in that the, um, the development requires uh, major changes to one road. It requires some changes to each road. What is, what is our jurisdiction over contemplating the changes to a, a scenic road that really is literally not even a road? I mean, there, there are, for example, there are wetlands impacts on the road for whatever changes they need to make. It's not clear to me that that was put before the Conservation Commission as part of, or would be, as part of our initial review. And I just feel like it's a little bit of a unique um, yeah. concern. I'm just, I'm wondering process when, I know, for example, I live on a scenic road, um, and when a development went in, there are changes to the road, but there, the road is, you know, is an existing road. The changes are, are minimal. Um, it just is, you know, an entranceway onto a scenic road. In this case, for Chamberlain, it's a um, little more than it's not even a cart path at the right. end. I don't even, I don't even know what it is at the end. So I don't know so what, what we, what our jurisdiction is over the that piece. Can I take a guess? And you, this is, this is where luckily nobody's here except the TV audience who are probably <laughs> finished with their Sunday coffee. <laughs> <laughs> um, if we require modifications. And for the traffic, et cetera, on Chamberlain, then at that point, we go to CONCOM to review the modifications. If there's wetlands impact. If yes. the wetlands impact. But I think you're asking about the scenic road aspect. Uh, it, it's, it's an interesting question. It's like the only time, it, it, the only time, I don't know any other road that's like this. So there are. Definitely wetlands impacts right at the even right at the corner, but there's also a vernal pool. So that was that was never discussed as part of the initial um, concom review for our process. And I get that it's off site of what the developer is developing. Um, I think that there is no there's no plausible way to develop if there aren't modifications to that road. I mean, it's not that road can't stay the same if it's going to be built. So I'm just wondering, right. so how, where in the right. process, how that happens? So most of that will happen at the definitive stage, because okay. that's when he's going to do all of his engineering and all of his designing. He's not required <coughs> to provide, I mean, he provided a lot of engineering, more than he technically was required to provide okay. you, which is a good thing. I'm not saying mm -hmm. it's not. Um, but the design of off-site mitigation is not going to happen 
at this level at all because we don't know, A, how many houses are gonna go in, we don't know what the impacts are gonna be, we don't know any of that. And so you cannot require offsite mitigation till you finalize the design of the entire project. If, if I may, any project that's like this in a similar situation where there's an overlay of uh, Conservation Commission, Planning Board, DPW concerns, uh, it, it's, it's a little bit of a juggling act and um, the neighbor's concerns also have to be taken into consideration at each of, the, of, those, of those places. So, so the, <coughs> the, the uniqueness of this, pro, or this type of project, I'm not even gonna use this project in specific, but this type of project is that they're applying for a special permit for the use first, okay. and the maximum number of lots. And that's the first thing they're applying for, and that's the first thing you're looking at. Now, I understand there's a lot here. <laughs> there's a lot going on. But a lot of the concerns by the abutters and concerns by the board are valid, but are really should be addressed at the next level. At the, and nobody wants to hear that, but that's the truth, like at the design level, at the definitive stage. This stage is really the special permit requirement. Are they met? Now, the, the one challenge with this project is you have to find that it's a, I don't know the exact wording, but that it's developable. Mm -hmm. or, mm -hmm. And because there are so many wetlands on this site, because he has contiguous sites that have already had wetland crossings, that all plays into whether or not this site is developable. Okay. But that is the, one of the findings so but as long as he meets all those findings i'm not sure that the board cannot <coughs> grant a special permit when we get to the definitive stage that's when we start talking about you know yeah so other stuff to be clear with you mr chairman i'm not I, i'm sorry i really you know i want to ask the question because this one is coming yep. sure um but it's it's more process and i'm not yep. looking for a way to deny this right this yeah. permit right. i am truly wondering um you know what obligation or what uh responsibility or you know does the town have to be willing to make dramatic changes to what is essentially the tiniest little little road that is off, just off-site of the property that he owns. Like, you know, there's, a, there's a marriage here well, so that the, happens. The, but it's a public way, regardless. It is a public way. And if he's willing to pay the money to make those off-site mitigations that the board and the town feel that need to have happened in order for this project to go forward, I'm not sure the board can, do you know what I'm saying? Well, if he's willing to build up the question. road, to town standards, and the Conservation Commission is going to give him a permit to do that, and he meets all the regulations. How do you say no to that? No, uh, so that that it's actually answers road. my question. Like he has the right to access <coughs> his property off that public road, just like everybody else who lives on Chamberlain Street. Okay, that that actually answers my question completely. Right, that that's what I was trying to understand was what our obligation is, just because of the uniqueness of that particular circumstance. Yep. Now, I know I missed the beginning part of the meeting, and I'm sorry. So, um, do we discuss meeting during the summer, maybe less often? Well, we just we have the one meeting in July, and then when I mentioned to Jennifer is let's look at what's coming down the pike, and if it <coughs> looks like we can take it, do one meeting in August, we can do it. But let's look at what's Fair being enough. filed, et cetera, before making the decision. Are you now, away so in August, or are you just near the end? But okay. uh, still, no plans yet. Um, and then, uh, so it's uh, definitely August fourteenth, and then maybe a second. Is that what we're um, Well, so right now we're scheduled for June twenty sixth, yep. July twenty fourth, and August fourteenth and August twenty eighth. Okay, I'll just put right now we don't have anything <laughs> after. Sorry. I think I think we'll <laughs> August 14th. Yeah, okay. If we did sacrifice one of the August, oh, that would be up to the board. Yeah. Which, yeah. How we do when we do it? Which we okay. probably should figure that out. They have a contingency plan, right? You'd have to bring my birthday present to the August 14th one. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think by the next meeting, like, I can have a better handle on what. Like right now, we have nothing scheduled in August. We only have one thing scheduled at the end of July. 
but I have a feeling that will get continued. Um, I mean, you'll have discussion about it, but it will get continued. It won't happen in one night. Um, I don't know of any, have you heard of anything else coming? I haven't heard of anything else other than potentially Roy's 180 units. Um, Unless that site plan for Wilson Street finally gets Or we down. also have a potential site plan coming for Wilson Street. Um, so, but by the next meeting, I should have a better hand on all of the agenda. Yeah, if we can do it, we can do it. If not, mm -hmm. if, if we can. Um, if, I want to also a, uh, to get us on a, a um, alternate schedule with ConCom so that we could have a meeting and they can have a meeting so we can have feedback from their meeting on our next meeting so that we're not always meeting at the same time so that when we do have a decision from us or from them, <coughs> we can Well, have, I'm sorry, I missed the first part. I'd like to get us on a schedule where we're not meeting at the same time as Conservation Commission because I think that hinders communication between our uh, committees where they, they, might, they might make a decision the same night we are and we won't know what their decision is and it just pushes everything back. And well, might, I mean, we always need the second and fourth uh, Monday. They go every other and they juggle their schedule for other things. I mean, I mean, that's hard to do, Frank. I mean, I don't know. Well, maybe more juggling when something comes up on the agenda than juggling the meetings. This is something to keep in mind. If if they uh, if we're going to say if we do get one meeting one meeting in the summer, it'll make it a little bit easier for us to get two meetings a month, and we can schedule a little bit. You know, it just, it just it's easier to get feedback, especially on projects like Chamberlain Street and. There's Stabagel nothing that prevents and, uh, if if we had a meeting tonight, a hearing, say, and conservation's meeting tonight at Senior Center, and they had a hearing on the same thing. There's nothing prevents you from continuing your hearing until you get feedback from the It makes things take longer. You know, if, we're both, if we're both discussing, say, Saddle Hill and the wetlands, and we couldn't make a decision on one of the designs until we got feedback from them, and they couldn't make a decision on, well, what design are they going to look at until they get feedback from us, it, that kind of thing causes two weeks of two week delays consistently. But if they meet, and then we meet, and then they meet, they, we know that they're meeting next week, and then they know that we're meeting two weeks from now. So just that thing, that kind of thing is hard on Mondays. There's Monday holidays. There's, That's true. you know, a lot of, there's Jewish holidays. We don't meet in Dijon typically. So there's, Mondays is a hard day to set in stone to do every other or whatever it is because of the holiday situation and a lot of that. So, I mean, I, I can talk to Don and try to change your schedule and try to make that work, if but. we just encourage people if something has to be reviewed by Con right, com. but what he's saying is, like, if, if they're meeting with ConCom tonight, they can't meet with us again for two more weeks. Which I don't necessarily think that's a problem. Yeah, I know. <laughs> if it makes it easier for us to get the full picture, it's it's two weeks. Yeah. But we encourage them not to schedule it at the same time. Right. And we'll be mindful of the same thing. Right. right? Yeah, I mean, and typically people are not going to schedule the same nights for both because they have to be at the meeting. Mm -hmm. So it's hard to get places at once. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, especially yeah. now. Like, it was easier at Town Hall because they could just jump from room to room. Correct. But here they've got to travel all over Tarnation to find us. <laughs> so, you know. I like being here better. Yeah. No comment. I've never <laughs> been to Town Hall, so I can't say. Well, just tell me that Jill, the August, whether we, if we decide to. So no, first one of the weeks, should we meet on the 28th? I mean, I don't, it seems like if I would be less people on vacation on the 28th. Uh, that, well, that was Frank's issue. He's going to be away that week. Oh, you're going to be away that week? School's going to be back in session, right? School back in session in the end of August this year. What day does school start? I think it actually like starts that. before Labor Day this year. <coughs> probably like the 31st or something. Well, like let's discuss it at the next meeting okay. where we yeah. have. Yeah. I'll try to find out what the school calendar is. Motion to close. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>